So now we live in a much more uh, complicated world, and we're a very uh, mature industry. So uh, dramatic innovation is a little more challenging. So first of all, what we do, if we have an idea for innovation, and uh, let's just take, for example, the migration to hydrocarbons. To hydrocarbon, or R290 is the trade name, or we know that as isobutane or butane refrigerants. So first of all, we had an EPA problem. It was not approved for use in the United States. So we, through manufacturing, had to lead the charge in Washington, D.C., along with General Electric and Ben and & Jerry's ice cream, to say, let's get this approved. So today, there's this huge regulatory piece towards oftentimes generating innovations. You've got to cover that base off. That's critical. Obviously, you go nowhere if regulatory stops you. After that, we have to go down into our supply base. Does the supply base support this? Can we, is it really going to work? Is it not going to add a lot of costs? Because we live in, of course, a very competitive world. Uh, then naturally, our customer naturally has to perceive a value obviously, that we all know that, that they perceive a value, which in this case of uh, moving to hydrocarbons, it's both energy efficiency and it's a green refrigerant. Um, you know, beyond that, um, you know, we are always looking for, I think it's more smaller ways to generate innovation. Right now, for example, we got an idea we've launched with Kroger, and where it came from is uh, very popular in the residential world. That's where we're playing in, and we got this idea, but what's big in residential are French doors, right? So we created the first French door glass door merchandiser for Kroger. So that means you open up the doors, there's no mullion there, you see all the products, they loved it. So obviously a lot of communication, coordination with your customer, but we're the ones that have to generate the ideas a lot of times and mm -hmm. present them to them.